are lots of things about cycling that are just the same for men and women. But one area where we do see some differences is in clothing. It's kind of obvious, really, because there are some fundamental differences in body shape. So let's look at how to choose your kit if you're a woman. I get loads of questions from women who are taking up cycling about what is the best kit to wear on the bike. And there really is so much choice out there these days that it can be super confusing. Sometimes the advantages and disadvantages of certain kinds of kit aren't really that obvious until you've been for a few rides. So here is the lowdown, well okay, my lowdown on the kit options for women. The clothing you wear on the bike is one of the most important things affecting your comfort. So if you want to enjoy your cycling, then it's really important that you feel good in it. Now, part of that should, of course, also be looking good because, let's face it, everybody wants to look good. But for my money, looking good is not as important as being comfortable, which is kind of just as well for me, really. Your kit is what is in direct contact with your skin. That, and especially the chamois, the padding in the shorts, makes it the first thing you notice on the bike. Plus, your clothing protects you from external influences, be that the sun, rain, snow, or hopefully not, the road, if you crash. And I'm afraid that most cyclists have a little tumble every now and then. I seem to have one crash a month, at least. Cycling clothing which you don't find comfortable or which does not protect you from the elements will leave you feeling miserable on the bike. But it's a hugely personal choice. What does comfortable even mean? Let's dive into some detail. First, the cycling jersey. Now, thankfully, these days, no longer usually made from knitted wool, but instead from sleek and lightweight lycra. Now, I have to confess that I'm quite a fan of baggy clothing, and I would much rather, usually, wear a loose-fitting t-shirt than tight lycra. That body-hugging shape, though, is actually a really good thing on the bike, because as well as being more aero, which is very important if you want to go faster, it actually also stops your jersey flopping around due to all the stuff in the back pockets, which is where you keep your food, your pump, your telephone. So actually, on the bike, tight is a good thing. And with your cycling jersey, you have loads of options. First of all, you've got long sleeves for when it's cold, short sleeves for when it's hot, full length zip, and in some jerseys, a half length zip. Now, why a zip at all, I hear you ask? Well, a full length zip allows you to unzip your jersey totally to take it on and off and also for cooling when it's hot. The half length zip is slightly more aerodynamic but a lot more hassle to get changed. You can actually of course use a cycling jersey without a zip, it's just harder to get dressed. Personally, I find that men's or unisex jerseys actually fit fine, except that they're often too long which means that the pockets hang really low at the back which is not a good look. Next, cycling shorts. This is a very important topic, so take a seat and settle down for some details. Firstly, let's talk about the chamois. Now, this is the padding in the shorts that protects your undercarriage from the saddle. A good quality chamois, like the ones in these Uma GT shorts, or this is ASOS's women's specific Lala Lai shorts, they can really help you to be comfortable for long days in the saddle. There's a huge variety in fit of shorts and shape and thickness of the chamois out there. Now, is women's specific shorts and chamois better for you? Maybe, but not necessarily. For example, I've found that some women's specific shorts are fantastic, but also some unisex shorts. The important thing is to find something that works for you and that your shorts fit right and that the chamois is the right shape that it doesn't move around when you're riding. Now we come to underwear and some people are gonna find this really gross, but no, most cyclists do not wear underwear under their cycling shorts. Now, I can see how this seems really weird, and I can still remember being appalled to find this out when I took up cycling. But the thing is that underwear only creates extra friction and chafing in the area where you need it least. Chafing is really bad. So, you don't actually need underwear, you just make sure you wash your cycling shorts after every ride. Easy. Now we come to another major question. Half shorts or bib shorts? Bib shorts have this brace system to hold them up. And you might well ask, why have braces on cycling shorts? Well, the reason is that if you have the braces, you don't need to have a waistband 
which some people find a bit uncomfortable when they're hunched over on the bike. On the other hand, the waistband shorts allow you to take them off, frankly, a lot quicker than with the bibs because you don't have to undo your jersey first to take off your shorts. Those can be valuable seconds to lose if you are desperate for the toilet. Now we come to the undervest, which is commonly worn under a cycling jersey, not just for insulation, but also, and this is absolutely vital, to stop rogue bees and wasps from flying down your cleavage. Very unpleasant experience, I can tell you. Undervests come in various thicknesses and shapes and sizes. For example, this is ASOS's summer skin foil vest, and it's really thin and it wicks the sweat away from your skin. Whereas this is ASOS's spring fall Evo 7 base layer. Not only has it got long sleeves, obviously, but it's very thin and yet super insulated to keep you warm on slightly cooler mornings. There's a wealth of different kinds of gloves for different weather conditions, starting from the summer track mitts with short fingers, through to neoprene for the pouring rain to keep your hands warm, windproof for when it's cold but not raining. And these are my personal favorites. This is the Tiburu Awesome uh, or Spring Glove. It's very thin, but nice and warm, and it even has conductive patches on the fingertips so you can use your phone without taking them off. Accessories. There is a plethora of accessories in cycling. This is not a comprehensive guide, but just a quick overview. Let's divide it into accessories for the rain and accessories to stay warm. Sometimes you need both. For example, this is the Stromprince Evo ASOS jacket, and that is properly waterproof. That will keep you dry in a massive rainstorm. To go with it, you could use a rain cap. It keeps the rain out of your eyes when it's pouring down. Whereas this is the Uma GT wind jacket. Now it's not waterproof, but it is totally windproof and it packs down much smaller than a rain jacket. Then we've also got knee warmers, leg warmers, arm warmers. Those are super versatile ways to keep warm when it's chilly in the morning or the evening, for example. Uh, but you can strip them off when it gets warmer and you want to have short sleeves. Moving on, we also have booties. Now these go over your shoes and socks to keep your toes warm. Very, very useful. There are also waterproof versions available. And of course, the trusty headband to keep your ears and head warm in the winter. Sock length is a surprisingly heated topic of debate among cyclists who love to mock triathletes for not wearing any socks at all. There was actually a time in road cycling when it was fashionable to wear your socks so long they almost came up to your knees. Although maybe that was just on me. But actually, now that some pros have outed themselves as preferring short socks in training to avoid the mid-calf tan line, I think that any cyclist should be able to be open and proud of whatever sock length they choose. And now to style. And who cares about style? Well, okay, we all care about style. But the thing is, it's way more important to be comfortable and enjoy your cycling than to look good. There are, though, some really, really stylish and elegant women cycling outfits out there. And uh, they're also functional. So why not enjoy how you look on the bike? I hope this video helps you if you are in a bit of a dilemma about what kind of shorts or what cut of jersey to go for. Why not let us know down in the comments what style of kit you prefer. And of course, if you'd like to buy our awesome ASOS GCN kit. You can find it by clicking in the shop and you can see how ASOS make their beautiful cycling clothing by watching this video down here.